Hello. So in this video, we'll be seeing about the software called Smart Connect. Smart Connect is a software that is used in Isilon to connect the user to Isilon node. Smart Connect is a software that is used mainly for a load balancing purpose, client connection purpose, and also failover and failback purpose. So this Smart Connect software is the one which decides which particular user has to connect to which particular node. So there are multiple things that we need to configure the smart connect to enable this client connection and load balancing and failover support smart connect basically is some, something that deals with the networking so we'll see how a, how an user gets connected to isolon through this smart connect and how this smart connect software works first of all the user tries to connect to the isolon through the Smart Connect zone name. Smart Connect zone name is nothing but the, the FQDN of one particular pool. So let's say you have a cluster with a mixed, mixed number of nodes, I mean mixed series of nodes. You have X series, you have NL series, and you want all the users of one particular application which demands high performance needs to connect it to X series nodes. So what you do is that you connect all the X series pools interface into one particular pool and you create a smart connect zone name for that and you give that particular smart connect zone name to the user for accessing that. So whenever there's a user connecting to this particular through this smart connect zone. So these users will connect only to the nodes that, that are configured on that particular pool. So in this case only the users will connect to the X series pool so they will be getting good performance of speed in terms of accessing the data and the same way you want to put all the NL users into NL node, node I mean NL nodes you can create a separate pool for them and you can create a separate smart connect zone for that and you can give that particular zone to the user so whenever the user tries to access the through that particular smart connect zone then the users will reach only to the NL nodes. However, the data is striped across all the series of nodes. Whenever the user reaches NL, um, I mean NL node, and the data will be taken through that NL node to the other node and will be given back to the user. So it does not mean that the user coming to the NL node will have only the data on NL node. So it's the uh, it's a path through which they access the Isilon. So now we'll see how an Isilon Smart Connect Zone works. So here the client attempts to connect to the Isilon cluster using the Smart Connect Zone name, which appears as a host name. That's a fully qualified domain name. So in the DNS, we'll have to make a an, an entry on the Smart Connect Zone name with the service IP. So the Smart Connect service IP is nothing but the service IP which decides which particular node has to be accessed by the user. So let's see on this particular diagram. So the first one, the user gets connected to the DNS server with the Smart Connect zone name that has been given to the user. So the DNS in this DNS server will have to give a name resolution to the SSIP in the Isilon. SSIP is nothing but the Smart Connect service IP that is configured on top of the subnet. Okay, so on the this particular DNS server will redirect the Smart Connect zone name to the service IP that, that we have configured. So the service IP will now find the nodes according to the client connection policy and will take one particular node's IP and give back to the DNS server. The DNS server in turn gives back the IP to the user. Then the user gets connected to the network switch to the particular node that, that the IP given by the SSIP. So now the user gets connected to the Isilon node and he will do the operations, the read write operations. So this is how a read and write operation takes place in Isilon in terms of the smart connect. So I'll repeat it again. So we have a DNS server and a network switch in between Isilon and the user. So this DNS server is an environment based. So you will have to make an entry of the 
smart connect zone name that you are creating to the SSIP. So SSIP is nothing but it sits on the subnet level and this SSIP is responsible for finding out the node according to the client connection policy. There are four client connection policies round robin, throughput, CPU and client connections. So according to the client connection policy that has been set this SSIP will find the node whichever node is um, free or whichever node is on the uh, round robin uh, pattern. So it will find out the node and will take the node's IP and give back to the DNS server. So DNS server now will give to the user who has requested for that particular zone name. Now the user gets connected through the network switch and reaches the isolon. So this is how an uh, um, read-write operation takes place in isolon. So now we will see what are the options available in smart connect zone and how are they configured. So in the DNS configuration, so this is how we configure. So this cluster.example.com is nothing but the smart connect zone name that I was referring to. The smart connect zone name is as a name server that is sip.com.example.com. This is nothing but the service IP. So the service IP is responsible for picking up the IP that is that need to be given to the user. So here we are again giving a SIP and A record with the IP. Now this is a setup that we will have to do it in the DNS server. Once this setup is done then according to the client connection policy the clients will be balanced. So here are the four client connection policies. Round robin. So round robin is a default client connection policy in which the nodes will be elected accordingly as a in a round manner. So if there are three nodes, first option will be given to node 1 and the second client will be connected to node 2 and the third client will be connected to node 3. Again if the fourth client comes in then again you go back to the node 1. So this is how the round robin works and CPU utilization, connection count and network throughput all these are based on their particular uh, uh, limit, I mean threshold. So CPU utilization so whenever a node, whichever node is having more CPU utilization and that will be omitted and whichever node is having less CPU utilized among all the nodes that will be given a chance. The same way connection count. So if there are three nodes and the node 1 has 5 connection to that and node 2 has 10 connection to that and node 3 has 12 connection. So obviously the node with the least number of connection will be given an option. And the same way for network throughput. So the node with less number of network throughput will be given a chance to get to the connect to the client. So these are the four client connection policies that we can set up and coming down. So here we can see the exact architecture how this smart connect works. So here you can see as I told you if you have a cluster with combination of two different uh, series of nodes, you can segregate all these nodes into different zones like performance zone and general use zone. So you can dedicate and you can create a smart connect zone name for this general use zone and you can give to the set of users who need only a general purpose uh, usage. And you can create a separate smart connect zone for the performance and you can give to the users whichever application needs more of performance. So this is how you can segregate the users connected to the uh, isolon nodes. And coming down, we have a dynamic, I mean, IP allocation method. So there are two allocation, I mean, IP allocation methods. So IP allocation in sense allocating an IP to an interface. So as I told you earlier, each node has four front ends, I mean, two 10 gig and two 1 gig ethernets. So in this case, so when you add an IP, I mean, you, when you add an interface to the pool, you will need to give an IP to that particular interface. So that IP allocation method is dynamic and static. There are two options. So in static, you, each node will, I mean, each interface will get one IP and in dynamic, so it's not uh, lim limited and uh, how many number of IPs are there, those number of IPs will get equally segregated among the number of interfaces available. So let's say you have an IP range of 1 to 10 and, in the, and you have interfaces of 5. So each, you know, each interface will get 2 to IPs. So accordingly, all the IPs will be utilized according to the uh, 
uh, node i mean the interface is available so uh, you should be you should be you should make sure whenever you are adding a new node or new interface to that you should have enough ip is configured to that so coming down to the um, I, I mean nfs failover method so here we have uh, failover uh, failover and failback policy and so whenever the ip allocation method is set to static then during this time the when the node goes offline the ip along with the node will go and the users can they um, the smb users connected to that particular node will have to reconnect to the other nodes so whenever they click it i mean they double click on the share and the user gets connected to the next node which is available but when the ip allocation is dynamic so and then when the node goes off the ip will go to the next node the ip will not die with that particular node the ip will just get transferred to the next available nodes so the users connected to that particular ip will not have any downtime in their uh, in accessing their shares so they will not have any disruption still they will be able to access their share without any uh, any disruption on their particular shares so that is how we are going to see here so here we have six nodes uh, the first one has a static ips as i told you in static each node will i mean each interface will get only one ip and in dynamic it all the ip ranges are get or eventually will get distributed according to the number of interfaces available so here you can see this particular node has two and this has three and this has one this has one so in this case when node one goes offline when it is static then that particular ip goes along with the node and when it is dynamic these particular ips get transferred to the other node which are available and all the users connected to this particular ips are redirected to the other nodes without any disruption so whenever you you have a clients with nfs it's always recommended to go for a dynamic ips as nfs is a status protocol you it's always recommended for uh, going with a dynamic uh, ip allocation on nfs users and rebalance policy so whenever this particular node comes online so on dynamic ip allocation so you need the um, ips that went to other node has to come back to that particular node when the node again becomes online so for that there is a automatic failback and manual failback if you keep that as a automatic failback then automatically when the node is online those ips will get again transferred to the node and when you have to give a manual failback you you, you have to do a manual a configuration of ips back to the node one and uh, coming down so the same way so when the node comes back the according to the rebalance policy the node gets assigned back to the i mean the ip gets assigned back to the node and so in smart connect there are two versions one is basic the other one is advanced so basic is a free version and advanced is a licensed version so not all the features are available on the basic version so here you can see the load balancing i um, mean the client connection uh, policies you have only round robin on smart connect basic whereas in advanced you have the rest all uh, three and nfs failover you don't have uh, but in advanced you have ip allocation you have only one static alone you have but here you have both and the smart connect zones so you can create only single zone per subnet but here you can create multiple zones the same way rebalance as uh, nfs failover is not there the uh, rebalance policy and ip failover policy are not applicable so both are not there and for smart connect advanced it is there so that's it about the uh, theory part so let's jump into the practical and see how to configure a smart connect in isolon